Hey, good morning. It's a Tuesday, June 16th. Really good to be with you this morning. I want to attempt to sort of wrap up what we've been looking at in terms of wisdom in our language. And specifically how the Bible uses wisdom literature to help us apply the truth of God's word into everyday life. As I've been saying, wisdom literature is the Bible's YouTube. It's vivid imagery which applies truth to every practical issue of our life. And that's certainly true here with our words and the destructive power or the healing power that they have. So we see here in chapter 3, after talking about the destructive power that words have, like a little spark and indict an entire fire, which is very much consistent with what we can do with our words, James asked the question, who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in gentleness that comes from wisdom. See, gentleness is not, doesn't light fires. Gentleness puts fires out. That's what our words are supposed to do. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. S such wisdom like this does not come from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is every disorder and every evil practice. See, that's that wisdom from below that causes so much agony and hurt and pain. The verses 17 and 18 talk about the healing power of wisdom from above, where we're gentle, open to reason, and we become peacemakers. But then at the beginning of chapter 4, which actually is part of a flowing unit here, and we shouldn't separate them, I don't believe, that we need to see the unity, James asked the question, what is the source of wars and fights among you? Well, if we're following the flow of the narrative here, that source is wisdom from below. So he says, don't they come from your passions that wage war within you? You desire and do not have. Well, what has he just been talking about? For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and every evil, evil practice. Envy, jealousy, selfish ambition, those things, that's where the problems come. We desire and we don't have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. And the murder is, is murderous speech as well. You fight and wage war. You don't have because you don't ask. We're not looking for God's wisdom. And yet when you do ask and don't receive, it is because you ask with wrong motives, which is, remember, brings us right back to chapter 1 of James, where he says, you know, don't ask in unbelief, don't ask in doubt, but ask in faith. You don't have because you don't ask. You, you ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives. And those motives, so that you can spend what you want on your pleasures. In other words, you can feed the jealousy, the ambition and bring about more disorder and more evil practice because that's what we're about. That's what we want when we are involved in wisdom from below because remember, it is earthly, it is unspiritual, it is demonic. If you're not focused on the wisdom from above, those things that are open to reason, gentle, reasonable, pure, focused on God, then your speech, no matter how nice it might sound, is based on wisdom from below and will produce all the ugliness that we just read about. So that wraps up this section. Come back here often and read it yourself and get a grasp on it and realize that there's strife and envy in your life. Yes, other folks may have a big role to play in that, but our role is to use wisdom to put out those fires, not to use our passions to increase them. There's nothing good about making other people upset and angry because we want to feel good about ourselves. That's demonic wisdom. Use wisdom from above that heals, that brings peace, that's gentle, that makes you a person who is open to reason and who uses words to build and soothe, not to tear down and inflame. And that's a really practical illustration for us of the beauty and power of wisdom.
get back to me. Give me some feedback about these things. These are important issues for us. Lord bless you and have a great day, and we'll see you again tonight. Bye-bye.